Good evening. My name is Radha Mahindru. On behalf of Asia Society India Centre and the Asia Society Museum, it is my pleasure to welcome you all to the sixth edition of our Asia Arts Game Changer Awards India, a signature annual gala committed to celebrating the best of contemporary art from across Asia. As the world slowly reopens and we deal with Zoom fatigue, it's great to see so many of you take time out to tune in virtually. It is such a delight to see artists, curators, collectors, gallerists and art enthusiasts from across the world, as well as Asia Society's Global Arts Council and Trustees gathered here to support the arts community and to celebrate our exceptional honorees for 2022. We begin today's ceremony with a musical performance by the renowned and may I say exceptional singer and composer, Zeb Bangash, joining us from Lahore. Over the past few years, Zeb has captivated audiences with her beautiful performance that cross linguistic and cultural boundaries, spinning the vocal traditions of Pakistan, blending them seamlessly into the modern world. We are so excited to have her be a part of this special evening. Zeb, over to you. Thank you for this introduction, Radha. Greetings, hello, assalamu alaikum from Lahore. Um, I'm delighted to be a part of this year's Asia Arts Game Changers Awards India because I really see it as a platform where we can be a part of an exchange of people's cultures and of course art forms. And that really to me is the special, most special thing about the work of the Asia Society. Um, the uncertainties that we have felt in our recent times and of course the isolation that we felt in the past couple of years makes this uh, all the more poignant and emotional for me and uh, it's really special that the virtual platform is allowing us to connect across political barriers, uh, sometimes very tense situations and uh, across borders to really think about you know, narratives of connective, connectivity and memories uh, of connectivity and interconnectedness that we've shared, uh, no doubt, for many, many, many centuries. So I will now perform, along with my friends, um, uh, two songs from my repertoire which celebrate womanhood and I hope that you will enjoy them.
Zeb for such a moving performance. It's really special for us to be able to host the awards despite the uncertainties of the pandemic. The virtual format has allowed us to connect and create a dialogue with the arts community, not just in India but from across the globe. It has given us the opportunity to bring people together that include many friends and colleagues from cities across South Asia, America, Europe, the Middle East and other parts of the world. Before we kickstart the ceremony, a little bit of housekeeping. We request all those who have joined to stay on till the end in order to support our incredible honorees. The awards will be presented in two categories tonight, the Asia Arts Future Award and the Asia Arts Vanguard Award, which our esteemed co-chairs will introduce. The evening will conclude with another rendition by the wonderful Zeb Bangash, after which I request all those who are joining the private VIP lounge to sign off and log in with the unique links that were sent to them. May I request all of you to keep the chat box active. Feel free to send in comments, questions, messages throughout the program and our team will keep responding. I would now like to invite Inakshi Sopti, CEO of the Asia Society India Centre, to give the opening remarks. Thank you Radha, good evening everyone and welcome. Thank you all for joining us for the 6th edition of Asia Society's annual Asia Arts Game Changer Awards India. Asia Society India Centre, now in its 15th year, is a unique forum for the discussion of regional and global affairs and is acknowledged for being a leading source of cultural initiatives in India. Through diverse programmes that promote creative expression and public engagement, we introduce a range of perspectives on modern South Asia. The last year has been exciting and one of change, even as we navigated some traumatic times. We've done more of what we were good at, pulling in some of the best minds in the world to address our audiences, while also experimenting with more intimate and versatile formats to drive engagement and exclusivity. Our digital presence has grown exponentially with our over 40 programs garnering more than 67,000 views and followers across our social media channels. The Asia Arts Game Changer Awards are known for spotlighting the best of Asian art and have played a special role in the evolution of artistic exchange. The awards are a global initiative of the Asia Society Museum led by our museum director Michelle Yoon Mapletop and held annually in Hong Kong, New York and India. At Asia Society India, the awards have previously been presented as a private gala. But last year, 
As some of you might remember, the fifth edition of the awards had to be hosted virtually as a public program for the first time in the wake of the pandemic. While we missed the warmth of in-person interaction, there was a silver lining as art enthusiasts from across South Asia and the global fraternity tuned in. It showed us the power of bringing communities together across borders and sectors within the arts. The importance of fostering collaboration and interdisciplinarity and the possibilities this can open up for cultural exchanges across the region in the future. The awards became a catalyst for us to rethink our identity and galvanized us to establish ourselves as a cultural hub for South Asia and South Asian diaspora. To this end, we're making a conscious effort to widen our footprint in the region, starting with our South Asian Advisory Council for Arts and Culture, a group of cultural leaders whose guidance has been and continues to be instrumental in this new phase for Asia Society India. But tonight is not about us. It's about the 2022 awards, the honorees, and all of you, the arts community. It's truly special for me to be a part of this celebration of contemporary art from the region, along with all of you. Artists, patrons, art enthusiasts, philanthropists, students, and members of the Asia Society family in a space not limited and confined by physical boundaries. On behalf of my entire team, I'd like to convey my gratitude to everyone that has made this evening possible. Firstly, our Arts Committee, constituting Dr. Feroza Godridge, Sangeeta Chindal, Radhika Chopra, Kiran Nadir, and Mukita Javeri. Our Advisory Council member and guest advisor for the awards this year, Sharmini Pereira. Our Art and Culture partner, Bloomberg, our award sponsors, DBF, Imami Art and the ARC Foundation, and our media and streaming partner, Harkat Studios, for their support. To all of you, our participants, patrons and collaborators, thank you for supporting this initiative of Asia Society and for taking the time from your busy schedules to felicitate the awardees and celebrate this congregation of the arts in South Asia. My colleague and dear friend Michelle Yoon Mapletop will now share a bit about the Asia Society Museum in New York and their engagement with South Asia over the years. Hello, my name is Michelle Yoon Mapletop and I'm Vice President for Global Artistic Programs and Director of the Asia Society Museum here in New York City. I'm delighted to be with you to celebrate the sixth edition of the Asia Arts Game Changer Awards India. While doing this long distance isn't the same, I'm so happy that the virtual format has enabled us to welcome more people to participate in our celebration this year, including colleagues from across South Asia and the South Asian diaspora. For over 30 years, Asia Society has been a pioneer in identifying and fostering contemporary Asian artists and engaging new audiences through their work. The Asia Society Museum has been a pioneer in organizing groundbreaking exhibitions of traditional and contemporary Asian and Asian American art. Over the years, we've also developed a special relationship with art from the subcontinent, hosting programs that span visual arts, performing arts, literature, and film, and including conversations with traditions, Nalima Sheikh and Shazia Sikander, Edge of Desire, Recent Art in India, The Progressive Revolution, Modern Art for a New India, Nalini Malani, Transgressions II, Hanging Fire, Contemporary Art from Pakistan, Lucid Dreams and Distant Visions, South Asian Art in the Diaspora, among many other exhibitions and projects. We're so excited to share that we'll soon be embarking on the Year of India in celebration of the 75th anniversary of the country's independence. And this will be realized through numerous projects, lectures, talks, and artist studio visits, among many other exciting presentations. I'm also really excited to share that in 2024, we'll be collaborating with the Cincinnati Art Museum 
to realize a mid-career retrospective of Shazia Sikander's work. Should your travels bring you to New York in May, we'd be delighted to welcome you to the 10th annual Asia Art Game Changers Award in New York. For this milestone anniversary, we'll be celebrating trailblazing of Asian Americans from across the arts field. Tonight, we're so excited about the India edition of these awards, now in its sixth year. My heartiest congratulations goes out to all the awardees, and I thank you all for supporting the Asia Society's India Center's annual flagship convening in the arts. I hope to see many of you in person very soon and wish you all a great evening. Thank you so much. It gives me great pleasure to invite Dr. Firoza Godrej, co-chair of the Asia Arts Game Changer Awards India 2022, trustee at the Asia Society India, and patron of the arts to introduce the DBF Asia Arts Future Award and its recipient. Thank you, Radha. It is my pleasure to welcome you all to the sixth edition of the Asia Arts Game Changer Awards India. I have been associated with the awards since its inception in 2017, and I have watched it grow to become a flagship annual cultural program for the Asia Society India Center. Like Inakshi mentioned, we decided to go virtual with the awards last year. And while nothing can replace the warmth of physical interaction, the digital space has allowed us to bring in a wider audience of art communities from around the world. This year too, we are excited to be able to transcend geopolitical boundaries and acknowledge the incredible work of artists from across South Asia. I'm delighted to begin the felicitation ceremony by introducing the DBF Asia Arts Future Awards 2022. Each year, the Asia Arts Future Award International recognizes groundbreaking contemporary visual artists or collectives from around Asia that produce exceptional and innovative work, enabling a deeper understanding of their region and cultural landscapes to global audiences. Previous honorees have included Pakistani artist Hamra Abbas, International Arts Collective Japan Team LAB, Vietnamese American artist Tiffany Chung, and Chinese artist Sun Sung and Yang Yong Lian. This year, we are really excited to shine the spotlight on Sri Lanka, a country very close to my heart, by conferring the G DBF Asia Arts Future Award to Jasmine Nilani Joseph, a bright young artist from Jaffna whose intimate practices represents the future of contemporary art from Sri Lanka. Congratulations, Jasmine. May you continue to provide and delight us with your practice. We will now see a short video of her work. I came across Jasmine's work while uh, doing research um, into Sri Lankan contemporary art. She was someone that really stood out for me. I found her to be a really um, interesting and exciting artist, um, perhaps one of the most unique of her generation. I've had the chance to work with Nilani on uh, several occasions, and the first of which was in 2015, where I co-curated an exhibition of her drawings. and. It was really, I think, probably the first time she had shown her work. I had already come to know her because she had attended so many of the talks that had happened at the Sri Lanka Archive of Contemporary Art, Architecture and Design. Nilani was one of these people who asked a question at every single talk. You knew where Nilani was because she had her hand up and was always, always asking questions. Jasmine is a part of a generation of some very powerful thinkers who are challenging the roles that women play, not only in the contemporary art landscape, but in the social sphere at large. I found her work to be very courageous in confronting histories, in, um, in collecting stories from her own upbringing and observations. Jasmine uh, focuses on experiences of displacement, migration, and the lived histories of Northern Sri Lanka 
which has experienced years of armed conflict. She comes at these ideas of her drawings as measurements, not only of space, but also people, of memory. And in that, she's continuing a lineage of a lot of South Asian aesthetic histories. And she takes that even one step further by stretching this linearity on a wall with her works, which are often on paper. And it's like a, a continuous line of perspective. She's an artist who has uh, explored relationships with tensions of boundaries. And having lived with views of various fences through her childhood, she asks simple questions in spaces and homes. Whose house is this? Who's lived here? And what is the history of the space? And I think that that relationship that she has with Jaffna um, through her work is, is where this very personal narrative comes in. The narratives that she draws within her work are really localized. They speak about the experience of, of Sri Lanka. And for those of you who have been, you will understand how the role of the borderlines that exist between properties, that exist between what is military and not military, religious and non-religious. These form maps all over the world for entry spaces to community. I mean, she does so much with just landscape and it's quite cinematic really if you look at her landscapes um, because they sort of harness memory, but they also are very full of imagination and very creative. And it's not really surprising to me that she sort of moved on to animation as well, because if you just look at these static drawings within themselves, they sort of employ the logic or the structure of film because they contain within, in them these flashbacks, this sort of slow motion, these multiple timelines that you see. I can see her becoming uh, a mentor uh, and a great advocate for Sri Lankan contemporary art in the future. Um, and I think she'll go on to become a, a really important uh, voice for Sri Lankan contemporary culture. In the three years since its inception, DBF has undertaken many ambitious cultural projects locally and internationally, emphasizing the need for connections and collaboration, which is at the core of the foundation's mandate. It is delighted that the DPF Asia Arts Future Award is presented to Ms. Jasmine Nalini Joseph, an emerging artist from Sri Lanka for her exceptional art practices. Hello, first of all, I would like to thank Asia Society for giving this award. And I like to dedicate this award to my parents and my siblings because this is not possible to come to this point without their love and sacrifices. I would like to thank to my friends and relatives who support me through the years and encourage me a lot. I like to thank to my teachers who take risks uh, and support me to give a good art education. And finally, I like to thank to the people from the art world who I worked through the years, especially to the people who are in many roles as artists, curators, writers, galleries, and festival managers. I live far from home, but I never feel alone because you always there and being in touch with me all the time. And, and finally, I thank again to the people who helped me publicly and anonymously in my career and support and encourage me to do more good things. Thank you. Congratulations, Jasmine. I hope you're all continuing to engage with our chat box and giving our honorees some encouragement. Now, I would like to invite renowned art patron, Mrs. Kiran Nadar, co-chair of the awards this year, to introduce the Imami Art Asia Arts Future Award and its recipient. Thank you, Radha. Friends and colleagues from around the world, welcome. As a long-term patron of the arts, it is always heartwarming to see global organizations recognize artists and art practices from South Asia. 
Asia Society has always been a pioneer in promoting cultural work. It therefore gives me a great gives me great pride to be associated with its India Center and join my friends Firoza, Sangeeta and Radhika as co-chairs for the 2022 Asia Arts Game Changer Awards India. I'm delighted to announce the Imami Art Asia Awards Future Honorary, my personal favorite, Sumakshi Singh. I have known Sumakshi and her work for many years and now cannot think of anyone more befitting of this awards. Past honorees have, been, have included Sorab Hura, Abir Karmarkar, Vibha Garotra, Benita Parsial, and Prabhakar Pashwapute. Sumakshi's ethereal and dynamic, dynamic practice has the ability to transform any space and give it new dimensions. Something we have witnessed through her work presented at the Kirnada Museum of Art a few years ago. Congratulations on receiving from Asia Society the Imami Art Asia Arts Future Award, Sumakshi. May you soar to greater heights. We will now see a short video on Sumakshi's work and practice. I was first introduced to Sumakshi's work back in 2009, and I have known her for more than a decade now. I think what's remarkable about the work and what struck me at that time was the its delicacy, the use of embroidery, but it's a sculptural use of embroidery. It captures both the sense of being sculptural as well as being uh, taking off from the idea of drawing and of the line. So if you look at, at her work, there's a very clear sense of line particularly in the architectural work, which emerged later. Sumakshi's works constantly shift among registers of space, time, and genre. A sculpture throws a shadow on the wall and becomes a drawing in space. The interface between a painted surface and a video projection creates a third insubstantial thing that can be experienced as light as emotion, but cannot be named. The space that I had thought for Sumakshi is something that resonated with her immediately. Um, it was a very large space. Um, and uh, she kind of, you know, plunged into that, that experience, almost producing a studio out of that environment because she made the work in that space. And as you walk into that immersive installation what you confront really is something that appears like an artist has been in that space and has kind of left that space midway through you see half painted scrolls uh, you almost feel like you've seen birds flying through or emergent plant life in the form of animation and it all seems like a kind of controlled chaos um, until you sort of turn around and see a projection where you see all of that that spatial uh, disruption sort of collapse into a single manuscript. She's amazing. I, I think that Samachi can do anything. And that's you have to be that way if you're going to make work as ambitious as the work that she makes. Um, it's really incredible. It's detailed. And, and so specific, and yet it's massive. That work takes that kind of focus, that kind of energy, that kind of insistence. Another favorite installation of mine is uh, 33 Link Road. The fragile architecture of her grandmother's home was actually recreated in pristine white sculptural thread installations. Her work renders uh, familiar forms like doors, windows, or even sp a spiral staircase into a mirage like illusion or something and uh, this work contextualized architecture in terms of time and the temporary and was truly ethereal and we are proud to be associated with asia society's marquee asia arts game changer awards india and to be presenting the imami art asia arts future award 
Imami Art is deeply committed to promoting regional art practices through innovative and alternate programming with an emphasis on community building. With the multi-year vision for the future, Imami Art is resolute to be a catalyst of change, research and inclusivity. We believe in supporting artists that represent the future through innovative practice, which is why it gives us great pleasure to support an award that recognizes visual artists from India who extend the realm of artistic possibilities in their practice and broadening the current understanding and perception of contemporary art. Good evening and a big thank you to Asia Society for this award. I feel very privileged to be included in the list of these illustrious artists uh, sharing this honor. Today, I want to say uh, very directly and simply just how essential I believe the arts are to the health of a culture and the health of the individuals living in it. I know it's been essential in my life and so a big thank you to all individuals, organizations, institutions. And on a personal note, I'd like to thank my gallery exhibit 320, my friends and family, my studio assistants, my teachers, my fellow artists, for the work they do to support and recognize the value that the arts bring to our lives. In my life, engaging in creative practice has really been my primary way of processing life itself, of processing where I am within myself and within the world. It's a great tool of self-discovery. I often find myself entering the studio with a set of unresolved feelings or questions which are perhaps too subtle or too overwhelming or simply too large for my mind to digest. And these could be feelings around death and grief or beauty and transcendent experience or the nature of reality and perception. And I find that in the process of making something and refining it outwardly, something within starts to get refined and a clarity emerges. And so art has this amazing capacity to actually transform consciousness, not just in the person making it, but also in the people viewing it. It's an alchemy that allows space for these undigested parts of life's experiences to open up and heal and integrate back into oneself. And this is a tremendous gift. And so I feel that making art is actually just way too important to be left to the artists. And my hope is that each and every one of us finds our own unique creative response to life. It will make for a flexible and open new world. The world we see today is largely the result of a world that's been dominated by our left brain values of linear thinking and imitative behavior and separation and categorization and breaking things up into boundaries. And while this has served us, I look forward to a world that's brought more into balance by the values of our creative brain, the right brain, which is actually unitive and it's synergistic and it sees the connections between things and allows us to show up fresh and mindfully present and not tied to our old models of how we think or who we think we are. In fact, it thinks in quantum leaps and imagines new futures from the inspiration within. It helps us find our authentic voice and to come from our origin. Someone I know used to say that we're all born original, but we die copies. And I often think how wonderful it would be if we could all show up all the time in our full, unedited, authentic vibrance. So thank you, Asia Society, for all the work that you do to support the arts. Congratulations, Sumakshi. Your journey as an artist is inspiring. Before we move on to our final award for this evening, 
We at the India Centre have an exciting announcement to make. Over the past few months, we have been working on a collaboration that is very close to our hearts. It gives me great pleasure to invite Radhika Chopra, co-chair for the 2022 awards and one of India's leading collectors and art patrons to share a bit about the special project. Hello everyone. I hope you're all enjoying the ceremony. Once again, it is a pleasure to co-chair this magnificent event, one that has grown in leaps and bounds since its inception. I've had the honor of being on the Arts Committee at Asia Society India for five years now, and it's wonderful to see the organization explore new avenues within the arts, especially relevant in what is now a post-pandemic world. Last year, to commemorate the fifth anniversary of the awards, we produced a series of limited edition print portfolios featuring works by some of our past game changers. Aptly titled The Absent Year, the portfolio was a poignant marker of a difficult time. Continuing this tradition, Asia Society has a new collectible this year, a beautiful set of limited edition marble plates featuring a lovely work by our 2021 Vanguard honoree, Jyoti Bhatt. Designed by Rushat Shroff and produced by artisans from Agra, these works of marble inlay are one of a kind. I would like to thank Jyoti Pai for his generosity, Rushad for his thoughtfulness, enthusiasm, and time, and the artisan community for their skill and magic. You may have caught glimpses of this project, but we will now reveal the final work of art in this video clip. Jyoti Bhatt has an intuitive understanding of materials and is sensitive to the creative labor that goes into making a collaborative work of art. For this project, he created something that represents his sensibilities as a printmaker, but also acknowledges the artistic work of the craftspeople who would translate it into marble inlay. No, in terms of like Mr. Bhatt's uh, painter-like quality, it was quite important to our, for us to kind of retain uh, that spirit through the translation of the marble inlays. Marble as a material is very versatile. Uh, it's quite monolithic in nature, but what's the beauty of it is that it can be chiseled in different ways. Essentially, the idea is to give Inlay a new voice, specifically for this project that we are doing with Asia Society. Uh, we are working with the idea of seeing how can we make Inlay uh, much more contemporary and also see how we can kind of tie together collaborations between a designer, uh, an artist and also the artisans. Uh, Agra is definitely the best place in the country for marble Inlay and the best of artisans are in Agra. Uh, the team that we work with is uh, a large family of close to about 10 to 12 artisans. So in terms of even selecting stones, we had a, quite an elaborate process of finding stones that kind of match with uh, the colours and the grains as well, so that each stone is not absolutely flat. Uh, there's a texture that's in the stone. Uh, it also looks much more painterly-like. You know, there's always a constant dialogue between uh, myself and the artisans. Uh, in terms of how we can best translate a particular work or a particular drawing or a design. When asked about the meaning behind the work, Jyoti Bhatt said, What we see on the outside may not always be the same inside. The title Self-Portrait or Noisy Outside Empty Inside refers to the hollowness I find within myself against the chaos of the outer world. As an artist, my main interest was to interpret this verbal concept as a visual one. In fact, the white shape, which looks like a human figure, is a concretization of this abstract emptiness, and the cluster of colored strips that form its surroundings appears as a leaf. The evocation of a human figure in the center of a leaf might have emerged from an old glass painting I'd seen during my school days of a child Krishna sleeping on a people leaf. There are a limited number of plates still available for sale, so I urge you to follow the link in the chat box to know more and support Asia Society. Thank you, Radhika. On behalf of Asia Society India, I would like to once again extend a big thank you to Jyoti Bhatt, Rushat Shroff and his team of artisans for making this possible. Now, for the final award of the evening, I would like to invite our co-chair, Mrs. Sangeeta Jindal, trustee at the Asia Society India and a major patron of the arts to introduce the final award category. 
Thank you Radha. Good evening everyone and thank you all for being here today from different parts of the world. This has been such a fun evening. Many congratulations to the DBF Asia Arts Future Honorary Jasmine and Imami Art Asia Arts Future Honorary Sumakshi. Truly well deserved. To echo my fellow coach Feroza I have been associated with the Asia Arts Game Changer Awards India since they began and it is indeed a moment of pride to see its reach today. We had to have the awards in a virtual manner in the wake of the pandemic, a move that allowed us to expand in unexpected ways. Now as the world has opened up, we will see how we can merge the benefits of the virtual and the physical to create spaces for cultural engagement and that are relevant and exciting moving on to the final award category for this evening the arc foundation asia arts vanguard award 2022 each year this award is presented to a senior visual artist who has been a pioneer and influencer in their generation and a mentor to other artists through their work the asia arts vanguards have made an indelible mark on the development of modern and contemporary art and have represented asia as the global cultural capital our previous awardees have included jyoti bhat krishan khanna arpita singh gulam mohammad sheik divan sundaram the kochi benal foundation and the late akbar padamsi it gives me great pleasure to add the wonderful himmat shah to this eminent list as the arc foundation asia arts vanguard for 2022 and now curator rubina karode director of the kiran nadar museum of art and her close associate will introduce him further thank you all thank you once again for taking the time to be here and i hope you enjoy the rest of the evening thank you sangeeta i feel truly honored and equally humbled to be introducing an artist such as himmat shah known as himmat bhai to all for whom art and creativity has had no bounds and has never been constrained by borders and divides of any kind i would like to begin by sharing a few vignettes from his art world and by reading out what himmat bhai has often said to me and i quote an artist is one who thinks without the mind walks without legs and flies without wings unquote i would reiterate that himmat shah lives by what he believes in and possesses a free spiritedness having embraced the creative emancipatory nature of art since childhood he possessed a fertile imagination and a fiercely independent mind ran away from home and school dropped out of every kind of formal training in art looking to nurture his appetite for adventure and discover that which is beyond the known himmat bhai all alone wandered and lived amidst the ruins of the prehistoric sites of lothal in gujarat where he was born on farmlands owned by his landlord father in harsh desert environments and dense jungles of gir processing emotions evoked by fear or and wonder gathering transformative experiences early on often sleeping under the vast stretch of the sky not knowing then what he was seeking even as a practicing artist without a permanent roof empty pockets and against all odds his indomitable spirit remained undiminished and artistic sincerity uncompromised his creative urge made him turn to discards thrown away objects bottles leftover clay and plaster enhancing their potential as art material his large commission mural in amdabad in st xavier school as early as in 1968 on his return from paris explored endless possibilities of three dimensional form and an evolved vocabulary in geometric abstraction 30 or more years from now when i first walked into himmat shah's studio in the artist gadi village in delhi a studio given to him by his artist friend j swaminathan the unforgettable visual that i witnessed is still etched in my memory himmat bhai was sitting on a low chair amidst many of his iconic terracotta heads that seemed to be staring back at him from all corners 
occupying almost the entire studio space. There were huge wooden boxes full of tools that Himmat had designed to inscribe these heads with intricate linear patterns, dots and sharp contours. I was also introduced to an enormous output of drawings drawn on paper, stone, clay and plaster using pencil, ink pen, brush, needle and nail. His drawings are gestural, poetic, tender, often induced as if by a mere breath. Drawing was the only gratifying and inexpensive medium that provided him as artistic impulse and instant release. It seemed as if the maturity of an artist's vision had been fused with a child's innocence. One of the founder members of Group 1890, a dynamic artist collective founded in 1962, Himmat Shah's modernist assertions became apparent in the novel form of burnt paper collages that were born out of boredom while killing time in a friend's office. Himmat Bai, who smoked in those days, playfully burnt a few holes into the paper but then got deeply immersed into the medium, exploring infinite possibilities within an abstract form with fragile charred edges. Over the years, Himmat Bai's oeuvre has expanded to produce silver paintings that were more like painted relief, one that you just see behind me, iconic heads in terracotta that were partly painted and drawn or gold foiled, and bronze sculptures that integrated elements of architecture. Enhanced by indigenous wisdom and the beauty of our craft traditions, he infused a new life and a modern sensibility into terracotta, an ancient medium, bringing to it a rare sensuousness and a timeless presence. Himmat Bhai has left his artistic presences in places unknown and without an art audience. His structures in the deserts are made out of bleached wood and bones, stone shards and rope fragments found on site. Such intense solitary experiences taught him that in the forgetfulness of the self and its ego, the miracle of creation of true art takes place. Himmat's art practice and enigma has been an inspiration to successive generations of artists. He now lives in Jaipur and though he never took up formal teaching, he has a great student following and is always surrounded by them. Close to 90 and full with enthusiasm, he is busy building a community studio of sorts and a foundry for students to freely experiment and self-learn and also de-learn what they blindly imbibe from a prescribed curriculum. Himmat's work has been extensively shown as in, and is in major collections in India and abroad. He has been the recipient of national awards, the Sahitya Kala Parishad Award, Kalida Saman Award and recently bestowed as Fellow of the Lalit Kala Academy. Some of his best exhibitions were put up at Art Heritage, Anant Art and the Delhi Art Gallery. The Kiran Nada Museum of Art presented Himmat Shah's first ever retrospective in 2016 encompassing his versatile practice that in new iterations travelled to Jawahar Kala Kendra in Jaipur and to the Bihar Museum in Patna. I am delighted to share that Asia Society India Centre has conferred Sri Himmat Shah with the ARC Foundation Asia Arts Vanguard Award 2022 for his invaluable contribution in the field of art and culture and for bringing to it a rare perspective. Hearty congratulations Himmat Bhai and wishing you the best for your ongoing plans. As a fearless, creative being, Himmat Bhai, you stand alone and true to what your name signifies. We are thrilled to formally announce the ARC Foundation through our partnership this year with the 2022 Asia Society Game Changer Awards to support the Vanguard Award going to Himmat Shah for his outstanding contribution to Indian art as a pioneer of form and his vast exploration of medium. हर एक व्यक्ति भिन्न देखती है प्रकृति भिन्नता को मानती है लेकिन श्रेष्ठता को नहीं मानती आर्ट देखना है तो आप कुम्हार को काम करते देखो एक कुम्हार देखो कहां अच्छी मिट्टी बनता है वो ले आता है उसको साफ करता है उसको भिगाता है उसको रोंता है तो उसको चाकू पर रखता है उसका घड़ा बनाता है ही नो एवरीथिंग देखते देखते आप देखने लग जाओगे Himmat Bhai for me is defined in one phrase. They don't make them like that anymore. I first met Himmat Bhai maybe a few decades back. For me, Himmat Bhai was this very maverick, interesting person who would very playfully talk 
but in whose studio you would also see very interesting things himmat is a, a kind of a sufi a kind of a person who remains within his own depths himmat and i were both in the faculty of fine arts himmat bhai was a kind of a man of the world with a hearty laugh if there was a big laughter among a group of people people would know that it is himmat himmat bhai begins his career as an artist of course he started as uh, as a painter he came into delhi and got a studio in garhi but before that as a very important member of group 1890 which was set up in 1962 and had its first and only exhibition in 1963 i knew his work during that period that is in the late 50s when he used paper and burned the paper with butts of a burning cigarette himmat bhai always made his own tools and therefore each tool is a work of art across the years he's worked in so many diverse mediums from terracotta to bronze to wood it's found elements that uh, kind of make up his sculpture things like discarded tires or bottles or other elements and these found objects and their recreation in terms of let's say a cultural commentary of the times that we inhabit has become a very very strong point of how we identify uh, himmat bhai's art to me his mad creation that makes us appreciate and look at sculpture in a very different way he's a pagla he can be very outspoken he can be very forthright so most of his contemporaries ran away from him <laughs> one thing he said to me which which makes me smile he said mujhe bhai dekhna tha i left my home and went through a forest into a temple aur us raat ko mujhe baagh dikha he wanted to experience the emotion of fear another aspect of himmat was dancing the garba and himmat bhai had his very favorite song rukhad baba rukhad baba tu halwo halwo hal jo he would dance with great zest You know, Himmat had not worked in bronze for a long time. Of course, there is a, there is there is a reflection of his terracotta works in the bronzes, but to take a medium like terracotta and convert that into bronze in itself is pure genius. He will produce some new work, and if I say amazing, I love it. He says, "Ragu, this is yours." As the figure who draws from the civilizational contrast with ceramic sculpting. and as a modernist caught in the chaos of found objects and disintegrating images himmat shah is this rare presence in indian art for me his work has at once offered a template to appreciate vulnerability and understand strength good evening asia art गेम चेंजर अवार्ड मुझे मिलने से बहुत आनंद का अनुभव करता हूँ और एशिया सोसाइटी आर्ट कमेटी का मैं बहुत आभार मानता हूँ जिनके जिनके थ्रू ये अवार्ड मुझे मिला उसका आभार मानता हूँ और मेरा जीवन भर की मेरी स्ट्रगल का और मेरी आर्ट का जो उसने मुझे सम्मान किया है उसे मैं बहुत अनुग्रहित हूँ दिस ब्रिंग्स एस टू द एंड ऑफ द 2022 ट्वेंटी टू एशिया आर्ट्स गेम चेंजर अवार्ड्स इंडिया आई होप यू ऑल हैड अ गुड इवनिंग यूव बिन अ वंडरफुल ऑडियंस ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ द इंडिया सेंटर आई वुड लाइक टू टेक दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी टू कंग्रेचुलेट द ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू ऑनरीज जैसमिन इलानी जोजफ सुमाक्षी सिंह एंड हिम्मत शाह Special thanks to our arts committee Sangeeta Jindal, Firoza Godrej, Kiran Nadar, Radhika Chopra and Mukita Javeri. Thank you to Sharmani Pereira, our guest advisor for the Sri Lanka Award category, to our Arts and Advisory Council and Asia Society's global members, patrons and friends for their continued support. This memorable virtual gala would not have been possible without our arts and culture partner Bloomberg, award sponsors DBF, Imami Art and the Ark Foundation. and our streaming and media partner Harkat Studios 
Shout out to Simran Ankolkar, Shiba Alexander, Tanya Dikshit and Karan Talwar from Harkat Studios for the endless patience and dedication. And now, to end the evening on a musical note, I welcome Zeb back for her closing performance. For those joining the VIP lounge, please log in using the unique Zoom link sent to you. Thank you and good night.